Hi, in this video we will explore the concept of voicing. To begin, I will play an excerpt from Chopin's Opus 10, number 3, Etude, twice, and see if you can notice any differences. First time. Second time. How is the second time different from the first time? Well, let's listen to the melody by itself. The second time, I emphasized the melody more than the non-melodic notes. In other words, I voiced the melody. In music, voicing refers to the specific notes that constitute a chord. It appropriately describes music that's sung in a choir. For example, in a choir, there are multiple sections, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, etc., that each sing their own line of notes, also known as a voice. These voices then combine to form the whole song. Because there are multiple voices, oftentimes there will be dialogue between the voices. For example, sometimes only the male voices will sing, whereas other times maybe only the female voices will sing. Playing the piano can be very challenging because it's one of the only instruments that can mimic the different voices in a choir. In other words, the performer must play multiple parts at the same time. Contrast this with the clarinet or the cello, in which the instrumentalist is usually just playing one note at a time. In piano, it's normal to play two parts at the same time, and sometimes even play two parts in the same hand at the same time. This can be very challenging. To be effective pianists, we must be able to differentiate between these different voices, not only in our heads, but also in our playing, so that the audience can also hear the different voices. And this process is called voicing. Let's go back to the example of the Chopin and look at the score together. I've highlighted what I believe to be four separate voices in the opening section. Each hand is playing two separate voices. Interestingly, the two voices in the left hand actually share notes. So, how do I know that the bass is a separate voice if its notes are also incorporated into the other voice? Well, notice that each low bass note actually contains two stems, one pointing up and one pointing down. This indicates right away that the note is part of two separate lines. Furthermore, the stem pointing up is a quarter note that lasts the entire duration of the beat, while the stem pointing down is the sixteenth note that lasts until the next note in the left hand. Therefore, we can conclude that the stem pointing up represents the bass line, while the stem pointing down is part of a different voice. Now, let's go to the right hand. Here, the higher voice is the melody and is the most important line. The lower voice, however, functions as accompaniment and should be played a lot more softly. You can think of it as a continuous ripple in the water while the boat is sailing up above. Now that we've identified the different voices, how do we go about learning the piece? Well, I think the best way to learn a piece that has multiple voices or multiple parts is to learn the parts one at a time. So for this piece, I might start with the melody and practice that by itself, and then when I'm satisfied with that, how that sounds, move on to a different voice and then repeat the process. It's really important that you be able to play all of the voices individually exactly the way you want to before attempting to put everything together. 
if you can't play one voice beautifully by itself, it's going to be much more difficult to play multiple voices together beautifully. Many students fall into the trap of trying to play all of the parts together from the outset, but then they never attain mastery over the individual lines. It's much easier if you start with one line at a time and then slowly put them together. Once you've learned the voices individually, it's time to put everything together. For a piece with three or more voices, you might find it helpful to start with just two at a time. For example, the melody and the bass, or maybe the two voices in the right hand. Once you're comfortable with two lines, you can then add the third and then the fourth voices. During this process, it's extremely important that you're still able to identify the individual voices within your own playing. This is where the idea of active listening comes in. For example, if you're playing all of the voices at the same time, the first time through you can focus on just listening for the melody. Listen to see if you're phrasing the melody the same way you did when you were just playing it by itself. Once you're satisfied with that, play all of the voices together again, but this time pay attention to only the bass. Once you're satisfied with how the voices sound individually within the whole, another thing to pay attention to is the balance between the voices. For example, you probably want to play the melody the loudest, but perhaps there's an inner voice that you would like to highlight as well. Now let's go through an example of how I might use this process to learn the left hand parts. So the left hand contains two voices, one of which contains syncopation on the beat. So if I were to play the left hand by itself, it might sound like this. You can hear that the first B of each group is slightly emphasized. Now, if I put all of the voices together, the first time I play through, I might just listen to the left hand to see if I can hear that syncopation. And that sounded pretty good. I could hear what I was listening for. But this time I'm going to play it again, but listen to the balance between the voices. And I could still hear the syncopation in the left hand, but it sounded like the left hand was a little bit too loud, and I couldn't really hear the melody. So then I would practice it again, and pay attention to the balance again. So you can see that this process might take many, many attempts. Each time I play through, I'm listening for one or two specific things. If you find this process difficult, don't worry, we all do. It's not easy actively listening to your own playing. It's a skill that requires many years to develop. If you find that you do need more help, however, you can try recording your own practice sessions. Then you can rewatch the video as much as you'd like and just pay attention to particular things. As pianists, we should always ask ourselves, how many voices are there in the music? Am I conveying the voices appropriately? And are the voices in balance? Voicing is a skill that requires many years to develop and you probably won't be able to master it in your first couple of tries. But I think it's an important skill that anyone who aspires to be a great pianist should be aware of. I hope you learned something from this video today. Let me know if you have any feedback, suggestions, or questions. Thanks.